Welcome back to the Ready State. Today we're talking about how to integrate blood flow restriction or occlusion therapy, occlusion training into your training. Now look, of all the modalities out there in the planet, all the things that you can do to your body, blood flow restriction is actually one of the oldest, believe it or not. Katsu has been going on in Japan for over a decade with millions and millions of millions of sessions logged. But it's also used in the hospitals, it's used in bodybuilding, and bodybuilders have been on this. Dick Herzl was the first person to ever put this on my radar. And what I'll tell you is, well, well trained, and one of the first things that you can do to try to change your physiology at a lower, lower intensity. We know it works. There's a lot of places, even in Germany, they'll have these uh, blood flow restriction centers where you go and just do some light exercise and they hook you up. More importantly for the average person, if you have a pair of Voodoo Floss bands, you can get a lot of the effect besides some of the very focused, targeted tools that are really great, the top end when we think like smart tools. Um, one of the nice things about blood flow restriction is it's easy to put on and easy to do at the end. Now we use it for a couple reasons. Oftentimes we use it to desensitize um, if we have a painful tissue. And one of the mechanisms we think is we're just engorging that tissue with blood. We're just turning on all of the machinery. I think in layperson's terms, uh, terms what you might think is your brain is thinking this system is not getting enough blood. We have to rebuild everything. So let's turn on all the, the machinery to have better vasculature, testosterone, growth hormone, all the things that, that matter in terms of, of uh, getting the machinery sort of upregulated. But more importantly, you're going to get just a gigantic pump. One of the things that we witness, and one of the things that's definitely best practice, is that a lot of our athletes are going back and doing the old-fashioned bodybuilding. So they're back off sets after your peak load or heavy load. I think that makes a lot of sense. Getting a good pump in the joint is just about perfusion. Just get that tissue the ligaments, the tendons, just get them engorged with blood. And sometimes when we're engaged in some of these high speed, heavy loads, sometimes we're trying to modulate our work volume on the way up, just so that we don't fatigue and we hit, but afterwards we don't necessarily do enough of the assistance work. So you can look at accessory work, assistance work, Mr. Coach Coach, you know who you are, as, um, as crucial, but also part of the magic of that accessory work is just to get a big pump gorge those tissues with blood, do a little bit of extra work. And even some of our gymnastics friends used to say, their coaches would say something like, just go do some work, right? You've just trained hard and all this, just get some work in. But one of the easy ways to respect your time is to just jump on a bike. And then the simple idea is to do a little work and stop, and do a little work and stop. And the Katsu kids would say, hey, do three to five minutes of work. You should be able to keep something comfortably. There are some much more official routines, uh, protocols around this that everyone does. But one of the things that you can do is if you can begin to play with this is that you should never be more than like a seven or eight out of ten discomfort. I'm up high in the joint so I don't have to be super tight. I just have to make the vasculature work harder. So I'm just wrapping up here all the way up in my, on my groin with uh, one of our thicker voodoo, voodoo bands here and what this does is this allows me to quickly have access both sides and then I'm just gonna spin. I'm gonna put on a big load here just so I get some resistance. And then what I'm gonna do is just spin for a little bit, maybe 30 seconds or so, right? And then I'm gonna chill for 30 seconds or so. And part of the work rest magic is that you're forcing the body to now have to work. As the muscles contract, you're bringing blood flow in and pushing garbage out and, and waste materials out. But then stopping, that, that phenomenon stops because the musculature isn't working. And so things are starting to back up. The, the, the cells are getting the, the signal, the nervous system is getting a signal that things are not right in the, in the kingdom. And then we start spinning again. So 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest. We want to do a minute of work, a minute of rest. What you'll notice is that at a certain point, your you know, legs start to feel like they're big swollen ticks. That's the point. We are agnostic about what exercise you want to do. But if I was an athlete who was a cyclist, this is an easy drop in afterwards just to get everything perfused. So I come out uh, feeling a little hot or I had a little hot spot. Let's go ahead and gorge that thing with blood in a quick and responsible way that integrates into a cool down. And in five minutes, I can get a lot of work done. You know, I can get my body, get a good pump, I can get those perfusions, and it's not one more thing I have to do, I've just integrated it. So one idea about using BFR as just a finisher to just get your system engorged and feel a little bit more athletic. See you guys tomorrow.